So tell me a little bit about your company and your product. Uh, Untangle makes an open source network gateway for small business, uh, which basically means we solve a lot of issues like blocking spam and web filtering and blocking sure. spyware and viruses and things that small businesses need to be on the internet. So what's the current solution on the market today? So how are small businesses currently tackling these issues? Um, the unfortunate situation is they're, they're really not for the most part. Um, they're in, a, in an awkward position where they have enough of computers where they have the same problems as enterprises but not enough budget or IT expertise to really conquer them. Um, so a lot of them go without or try to put together uh, their own homemade solutions, which doesn't work out very well. Was it primarily existing open source products or open source projects that were currently ongoing kind of on the web or were they initiated by Untangle? Um, a lot of them were already existed and actually okay. solved a lot of the great problems out there that small businesses have, like blocking spam and web filtering and so on. Sure. Um, they just weren't consumable in ways that, that small businesses can use them. Uh, so our job is really take those great technologies and turn them into a real product. One of the, the, the key challenges was um, small businesses aren't going to buy a bunch of servers to run all these different applications. Right. Uh, so the first thing we needed to do was um, basically write a networking platform so we could run it all on one server, which reduces costs, which is you know ultimately important for small business. Uh, and then what else we had to do was take them and boil them down to something very simple, put a nice clean user interface on them, make them work together uh, so that small businesses and small business IT could really, could really use them. So why is it that it's so difficult to get them to play well together? And why do they have to typically be run on different servers? Um, typically for performance reasons, um, you have to run them on different servers. You've got all these different you know, applications doing all these different tasks. Um, it's actually quite a difficult problem to get them to run on the same server and cooperate. Um, on the management side, you just want everything to be managed very similarly, so you don't have to relearn everything. You want it all to have the same reporting and so on, uh, just so that users don't have to learn you know, 10 different things to accomplish 10 different things. They just learn one paradigm and they can, they can handle it. Sure. So what are the different um, kind of features that you provide? Uh, I'd say the key ones are you know, spam blocking. Small businesses have a lot of problems with spam. Uh, web filtering is another big one. We have a whole bunch of security anti-spyware, antivirus, firewalls, VPNs. Uh, the idea is kind of anything a small business needs on their network, uh, we provide that on our platform. Okay. Uh, and that's all provided for free, is that right? Most all of it's provided for free. Our business model is um, we provide everything for free, and then on the side we actually have commercial add-ons or commercial support, which we'll sell. Okay, I see. And what are those, what are those add-ons look like? Um, some of them are from other vendors, commercial antivirus products that you can order in addition to our base antivirus, which is free and open source. Uh, some of them are offerings like support. Um, some of them are actually hardware options if you'd like uh, to run on our hardware. It runs on any hardware, so you can just download and run it on your hardware as well. So what does the deployment process actually look like? So step by step, just so I can understand kind of how complex it is or how simple it is. Um, so today, basically, what you're going to do is download an ISO, which is a CD image, burn it, and it's just like booting up a normal OS. Okay. You're going to you know, put it in the machine, you're going to boot the machine, and basically it's going to wipe out the machine and turn it into an untangled server. Oh, okay. At so that it has point, to be a dedicated server. Yes, it does have to be dedicated at this point. Um, at that point, you're going to put it on your network somewhere between all the hosts and the internet. Uh, usually you're gateway or firewalls. It can also be in a bridge mode, but you know, between you and whatever you have already. Right. Um, and then it's going to filter traffic as it goes in and out of your network. So you don't have to install anything on all the hosts. Uh, you just pop it right there in line and it's going to do all its tasks. So now let's just stop another company um, from coming along and kind of duplicating what you're doing. Now that you've put in kind of all the he heavy lifting and done this integration and made this all available open source, why doesn't someone else just start another Untangle? Uh, the, the real key innovation was um, the technology that we have underneath that allows us to plug in all these together. Right. Um, and that's proprietary or? That is actually open source as well. That's open source um, okay. But I think the idea is once you build a platform um, that allows you to pour all these applications to a platform, um, it doesn't make sense to build another competing platform because this one already has so much value on it. Okay. Um, so to have another one start from scratch at this point where other people are all adding their applications right. would be a difficult task. Right. So how long did it take you to get to where you are? Uh, we started in about 2003. Uh, and as far as building the technology, it was a very dedicated group of individuals that for two years basically just put their heads down and, and wrote the platform. We had our first beta in 2005. So now who's your target market? Is it primarily small to medium-sized businesses? Our, our focus is totally small business, um, so it's not a scaled down enterprise product. We're not looking at enterprise. We don't do enterprise features for the most part, um, and we're above consumer. So we really say somewhere around the five to users to 100 user is our market. Sure. Now, would you consider in the future perhaps pursuing consumer space? It could be valuable for people for their home networks to have kind of spam filters and spyware blocking. 
Um, we've, we've absolutely considered it, um, and we do have a few techie people who will take it and use it at home. Uh, that's not very uncommon. Um, sure. So we've considered it, and I think it's, it may not be a focus of ours, but it's not something we're actively trying to, to cut off. Sure, I see. Now, um, individual applications are kind of becoming better and better about incorporating the features that you provide. There's pretty good spam filters that mm -hmm. are already available for email and such. So eventually, would a service like this not be necessary anymore, do you think? I think that the service is even going to be more necessary because you okay. have so many applications that um, unless you're a really technical person that just loves this technology, you don't want to have to go through all the different choices in every single oh, application. Okay. Okay. Um, you want somebody to kind of make the mega choices for you and make them all available in a way that, that's right for you. So what's your monetization strategy? Is it primarily these kind of add-ons for um, the, the kind of higher packages that are beyond kind of your free offerings? Primarily, that's, that's what it is. Okay. Um, our goal is, and the reason behind the free offering is, it's incredibly hard to reach small business. Um, and to reach small business cost effectively. Right. Uh, so our free strategy is basically let's get Untangle out there, let's get people using it, uh, let's get some buzz, and we've gotten huge success with our free offering. And then right. to turn around and monetize that same population, right. add more applications over time that we think those people need, uh, and later on we'll monetize some small percentage of that on a subscription uh, basis. So what are the challenges, um, would you say, kind of speaking broadly, about being a commercial open source company? Um, it's definitely, uh, it was new for us. We were originally not open source. We went open source about a year, year and a half ago. Okay. Um, and it was a very refreshing thing on the whole, um, being open and being transparent so outsiders know what's going on in your company. Uh, right. It was a little intimidating at first, but it's actually a wonderful thing. Uh, the business model, I think, is stellar for reaching small business because they're so budget sensitive. Having a freemium model where you, know, you have sure. a free base and then you can upgrade them later works very, very well in small business. So tell me a little bit more about your kind of personal career path. There are a lot of people out there that would like to be entrepreneurs but, um, and can found companies, but, but it's challenging. So it's interesting to kind of hear about how you, know, how you did it. Um, I originally was not planning on being an entrepreneur. I was always a, out of a technical background. I've been doing security stuff for quite a while. Okay. Um, so I came out of an engineering background um, and had done a startup prior to this, not my own startup, where I was a chief architect uh, working on the product. And I think we stumbled in some interesting opportunities, which sure. we said, you know, this, this could be really interesting. Uh, and that was when we left to, to do this. So do you have any advice for aspiring entrepreneurs? Uh, any advice? I would say don't worry about the risk and just go for it. Um, there's really relatively little I think you have to lose um, in the Silicon Valley. Um, the other thing, you know, I took a couple business classes in, in college saying, you know, I'm not really going to use these. I'm just kind of interested. Right. Um, that actually turned out to be fairly useful. <laughs> the most useful college courses you took. <laughs> I would uh, surround yourself with intelligent people. There's plenty of sure. advisors out there who love helping entrepreneurs. And I really think that's what makes the Silicon Valley a great uh, environment is that there's so many people that love uh, entrepreneurship that they're willing to help you and they just want to be along for the ride and, and see how it goes. Sure. So how do you find and kind of seek out those mentors and advisors? Um, you know, originally when we came here, uh, I didn't know anybody. Uh, so it was an interesting thing of trying to build your network at the same time you're building a company. Uh, we just started from, you know, a couple people that we, uh, we had met via Craigslist um, and just worked the network. And so-and-so introduces to so-and-so, introduces to so-and-so. And eventually, you know, you had people that knew about your space and could help you accomplish all the different things you wanted. So it was really just a slow process of, of building your network. Sure. So in terms of building your company, what does that look like step by step in the early stages? I know lots of people think of ideas and then we just wonder how you get started. How do you find a team? Should you look for an office? You know, do you get a beta product out there? You, kind of where do you start and how do you do it? Um, originally, we, we worked at home for a short amount of time. We said, hey, let's go get an office. Um, and we couldn't afford any. We didn't have any, any money to, to pay people, so we couldn't. Um, higher in traditional methods, but we just said, hey, you know, if you'd like to join our team, we'd love to have you. We can't pay you. Um, what we found was a couple really dedicated people um, that wanted to do it for the sake of accomplishing something, that weren't looking for a job in the traditional sense. And that actually helped us build a really stellar team that could accomplish some amazing things. Um, we had to just work hard for a couple of years and really uh, dig in. Uh, once we got the technology in a somewhat working state and had a beta, uh, that was when we went out and get seed run, uh, our seed round from a couple of Silicon Valley uh, angel investors.